Morning. Good morning. I hope uh, I hope we're all hanging in there. Wanted to give you guys a uh, an update, uh, just because you know it's another week, uh, another week of of change, and uh, we're all experiencing a number of challenges. And what I wanted to speak on today, uh, and, and I, I'll even speak on what's going on internally within our own organization, is is just cautioning against. You know, I've seen a lot of people make decisions that are you know, self-preservation efforts, which I understand, especially in a time of change, you've got, you know, you've got to make sure that um, your family's taken care of, that you're taken care of. Um, but I want to encourage the conversation to not just be about me, but more so about we. And unfortunately, some of the things that I see people doing and, you know, and business owners in particular, out of response to fear during this time, um, they're making a lot of decisions and in the process where we have the potential to destroy one another is each other's organizations because of how we're pulling back in fear. And look, I'll be completely honest. I'll be transparent with you guys. I'm scared as well. I haven't been sleeping well at night at all. Like every night I'm waking up and, um, you know, the last several weeks has been really tough. I've got over 65 people in our organization to take care of. We've got over a thousand clients to support. Um, you know, just to put it in perspective, our payroll is over $20,000 a day. I mean, it's over half a million dollars a month. And that's, you know, that's scary. You know, so I, I want to be very transparent in that in the sense that we're all taking a hit and we're all experiencing these challenges. And I don't know that anyone, again, I'll say it outside of like Zoom and Amazon, that's really immune from this. Um, but the thing that I would caution you guys against, and I, and I you know, I put out a, a message to several of our clients and some of the fast growing firms yesterday to ask them about what are some of the biggest mistakes that firm owners can make during this time. And I wanted to share with you um, what they had shared with me. Uh, so that perhaps you could find this as valuable. It could be you know, beneficial in some way, perhaps, um, because this is coming from some of the fastest growing firms in the nation, how they're adapting, and many of them are adapting quite well to the situation at hand. So I, I at least want to share that. Um, the first one, the first mistake was to panic and make decisions from a place of just fear and emotion and not clarity. Uh, that is, you know, so often right now, I think people are making decisions based on the fear and, and pain today and believing that that will extend well into the future. So like several months from now, when in reality, we don't know whether it will or whether it won't. Um, so when you're making these types of decisions or gut reactions, which are typically low level decision making, I caution you against that. Um, the other thing is just not notifying um, your clients that you're open for business. You know, if, if you're asking yourself, why is the phone not ringing right now? Well, I would also encourage you to ask, like, do our clients know that we are open? Um, because they may not. You know, and, and putting out some communications out there in the way of just you know, showing that you are open for business, how you're working remotely, um, showing that your team can work remotely, how you're engaging with clients virtually, that you're there to support them, that you're there to help them. Putting that messaging out there can be very beneficial to address the potential concern that people just don't know whether you're open for business or not. And you're seeing this with restaurants as an example. If, if you're looking at various restaurants out there, uh, if a restaurant is down right now, outside of the fact that people you know, in many areas of the country can't come in in person, but what if that restaurant started putting messaging out there that said, look, we are open for business. We allow curbside pickup. We're doing delivery. Let me take it back into our kitchen and show you how, um, how we're doing things, how we're making sure that things are safe, um, you know, the proactive measures that we're taking. That restaurant would have a competitive edge. You can do the same thing for your business. Um, the next mistake, uh, in, in, and again, this is feedback that I received from you know, some of our fastest growing firms. So this is what they're saying, but uh, is just making personnel decisions like layoffs based on assumptions without considering long-term implications. So it, and I will speak to this, you know, again, this is recorded, this is going out live to the, to the internet. So this is a very, very uh, um, uh, potential risky situation or something for me to say publicly, because then you risk being a hypocrite and I cannot predict the future. Um, but one of the things that we did, and I didn't do so out of nobility or what have you, I did so more so out of leadership and because I believe it is our duty as leaders to take care of our team, is to make sure uh, that we notify our team that we have no plans to lay off any team members. Uh, we're going to do whatever we can and be creative and strategic enough to allow our team members to be taken care of, for their families to be taken care of. Um, and I get it. I know that's not an easy thing to do. It's painful for me to say. Like I said, we've got payroll that's you know over $25,000 a day. Okay, that is extremely expensive. So when I put that out publicly, that's painful for me. Um, and and you know, I let the team know publicly as well. And I did so, so I could be accountable for figuring out that solution. I did it to put myself and our leadership team in the situation to figure it out. Um, I truly believe, uh, and I heard this the other day, Ross Salino uh, shared this with me, but you know, laying off your staff and putting their families in the unemployment line is one of the most disloyal acts that a firm can show to the rest of their staff. Um, you have to recognize that like when you're letting go of great team members as a knee jerk reaction because you're in pain today and not even just team members, whether it's clients, uh, vendors, staff, anything like that, that support you to create success for you. Um, you're, you're doing so in a way that may be viewed on a, on a very kind of short term basis 
because the reality is this will pass. And then, you know, as, as the phone starts ringing again, as we start traveling again, all those things, we're going to have a need for expanding our teams and we're going to have a need for those capabilities. But people will remember how you responded as a leader during this time. Like most definitely people are paying attention. Your community is paying attention. Your team is paying attention. Um, your partners are paying attention. So hear this from me right now. And again, I'm saying this is risky because it's recorded. It's online. Um, it, in the sense that we have no plans to lay off any team members. We're going to do whatever we can to make sure that we preserve that. That doesn't mean that we're not going to terminate anybody who may not be doing their job. I think we all have a responsibility to, um, to do our jobs properly and to execute in those roles. But sometimes it's shifting people around to various roles, being able to uh, have that flexibility so that there's not as clear of lines um, as just, okay, maybe somebody was in the intake department. Now we need them in the marketing department. Now we need them making calls for clients, whatever it might be. It's just finding those things creatively. At the same time, I also want to make the commitment that we're not going to cut any of our partners, any of our vendors. We're not going to cut back our marketing. We're going to continue to invest in those things because those partners are the reason why we are successful. And when I say like, let's not destroy each other, when you're cutting back and you're letting team members go, A players go, when you're letting partners go, when you stop paying them, consider that they have businesses, that they have teams. You know, as a community, we have to rally together. And as business owners, the reason why I believe you become a business is because you want to you feel better about betting on your own success than betting on somebody else to do it for you. So this is the time, in, in my view, that you step up as a leader and figure it out. Okay. The next thing uh, is letting yourself go. So meaning that, you know, when you are getting off track from your daily routines, exercising, meditating, journaling, whatever it is that you need, um, sleeping properly, which I'm not doing a good job of, right? I mean, I go to sleep at the right time. It's just the, the actual sleeping part that right, lately has been a challenge. Um, you, know, what, you know, exercising, eating healthy, all those different things that allow you to be a great leader. Uh, I encourage you to really stay on top of those things, especially in times of adversity. Um, and then there's failing to adapt. Okay. This is another huge mistake. You know, when you fail to adapt and innovate and be flexible, that will cripple your business. Not everyone's going to make it, unfortunately. Um, but if you're using COVID-19 as an excuse to give up or not to not try to come up with creative solutions, then what do you think is going to happen? You know, I think there's like the Henry Ford quote where it's like, um, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. You know, so it's like, which side do you choose to be on? You know, and then I've gotten a lot of criticism lately. It's like, wow, like, you know, Mike, you know, you know, it's confusing optimism with delusion, right? So we deal in realities every day. Um, but if you think that me putting out a positive message and encouraging business leaders to be proactive is a delusional thing, well, what's the alternative, right? Should we just go into our underground bunkers um, and do nothing and just wait? And then, you know, because I view things as you control what you can control. You can't control what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or what have you. We're not, put, you're not making policy in government. Um, I'm not you know, going to necessarily wait on the government to save us or our own organization. I think we have to take care of that. We have to take care of our teams and our families um, and our partners and vendors. And I don't think that enough is said about that. Um, like I said, we're making the commitment to stay with our partners and vendors, to continue to invest in them because we're also mindful of their businesses and what happens there. You know, what happens when you know, the economic hit of all this and the places you used to go to, let's say the restaurants you used to frequent, uh, the gyms you used to go to, um, those people have families and teams. Let's say you have kids and you put them in karate classes or music classes. What happens when those businesses are out? And when we come out you know, and you're seeing people and all these businesses that you used to frequent no longer exist, what is the impact of that? So it's finding ways to support those people and to support the communities um, and really making a good impact, which leads me to the fact that this is a great opportunity. Lead with an open hand. And what that means is support those around you. Be encouraging, be supportive. You know, if you can buy gift cards for, for a real t retailer right now, do those types of things. Um, you know, the best thing I believe that you can do is to be an example for others. And that starts with taking care of your own house and taking care of your team, your family, your partners, you know, being creative in a way that allows you to preserve everybody because they're relying on you now. And when this passes, as it will pass, we're gonna look back and see how people responded during this time. And I think the best leaders are going to be rewarded significantly for taking care of their team. They're going to be rewarded in loyalty. They're going to be rewarded with people stepping up. They're going to be rewarded with confidence within their community. Um, we're, we're seeing numerous clients you know, now stepping up within their communities, you know, whether it's making various donations, whether it's hosting food drives, all these different things. Even when we're all in quarantine, there are these, you know, uh, there are exceptions that allow you as, as essentials. So you can still step up and your community is watching. So it's looking at, okay, perhaps, you know, we're all selling always, right? You're selling your firm and how you position your firm and how you brand your firm, what you're doing during this time. It's a great opportunity to step up in the community and gain a lot of trust and respect and credibility because you may sell them today and just collect later, you know, when this blows over. 
So, you know, being mindful of what are you doing during this time when people are watching and people are looking to you for answers, perhaps. Um, and then finally, you know, the, the biggest mistake, and let's say this is number six, I believe, is abandoning your long-term vision in favor of impulsive decisions. You know, John Morgan has this quote that everything is about tomorrow, nothing is about today. And, and hopefully you still have a long-term vision that you want to preserve, that you continue to want to grow your business, to make a greater impact in your community, to be able to support your team and so on. So, you know, when you're abandoning that, that's when you're contracting. That's when you stop marketing. That's when you start letting people go. That's when you start making decisions based on fear rather than based on growth. And if you're saying easy for you to say, Mike, well, again, this is coming from someone that doesn't, that didn't take a single loan that doesn't, you know, started the business with $500 to my name. We bootstrapped the whole thing. We're funding the same thing. Um, you know, and whatever it takes to support our team during this time and to support our clients, that's the decision that I'm making. I'm not saying that has to be yours. That's just how we're choosing to lead during this time. But I do not feel comfortable putting our team and our partners in the unemployment line if I'm going to drive home and I see a lot of, uh, you know, business owners that are cutting 50 to 75% of their team and then flying on a G500. Okay, or they're driving into their multi-million dollar mansion. And I don't fundamentally agree with that. Okay. That's not being a leader, that's being selfish. Okay. So I encourage you to lead with an open hand and support those around you. Let's not assume that anyone's coming to save us, right? We've got to save ourselves. Um, but let's not destroy each other in the process by abandoning one, you know, each other, by abandoning our teams, by abandoning our partners, all those different things. We're all struggling. Uh, trust me, we are. It took a million dollar hit last week. You know, ouch, it hurts. You know, not sleeping well, I, you know, I feel you, trust me. But what are my options, right? I can uh, choose to contract and pull back and, you know, or you know, we can be proactive and we want to maintain a positive and optimistic message because this will pass, you know, hang on, hang in there. Um, and let's, sure, make, let's make sure that we elevate um, ourselves because you'll look back on this perhaps several months later or a year later and remember how you responded. And this might be a, uh, not just an incredible story, but as a way that you found ways in which your team could be more adaptable, more flexible, you, you gained more creative solutions, you were able to be more innovative, that those lessons allowed you to succeed and perhaps maybe even this year, have your best year ever. All right, guys, be great. See you.